I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Edgar Oviedo. He is extension poultry specialist, focusing on broiler management for North Carolina State University. Great to have Hi. you here. Nice to see you. Now, I had somebody uh, tell me the other day that Edgar Oviedo, I mean, he's he really specializes in, in lameness. So uh, I, I want to talk with you about lameness and poultry. Now, to me, when I think about lameness, I think of maybe big-breasted birds that are waddling around too much weight on their legs or whatever. But you say, you say that lameness really starts in a hatchery. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, something that, that for 20 years we have been uh, doing research is that um, many times the problems are observed when the birds are growing fast and when they are heavier. Um, but uh, mm, what normally is um, not well observed is that those problems started way, way earlier during the first days of life. The only thing is that since the birds are so small, people cannot detect those differences that just become bigger as the birds grow. And something that has been very well studied and, and we have demonstrated in different projects is that uh, the main failure that, that you have in the bone is not related only to mineralization or damage of the bone, the structure, is, is it the damage that it can happen on the collagen. And that really starts from the embryo development through the first days of life. So before they even start walking, we've got to start thinking about lameness. Um, what can be done in the hatchery, and I guess maybe even further up the line, what can be done to prevent those problems? Yeah, one of the things that we have seen and actually have helped many companies is just something as basic as reduce the uh, incubation temperatures during the last phase of uh, incubation and the, in the hatcher. So if you reduce the overheating that normally these birds have, they will have a better development not only on the bones but in all the tissues and better immunity. That is the reason that um, when uh, you do that, you will see a reduction that will knock down the, the incidence of leg problems in even half. So it's, it's, it's as, as simple as, as that. It's just management of temperatures and management of good ventilation during the last phases of incubation. And so it, it, is the approach going to be different if you're going to be raising a bird to six and a half pounds or so versus four pounds? Basically, no. The, when you do uh, these management practices, generally the, the effect will be good for any size bird and it will be more visible or you can quantify it better with bigger birds. It's, it's, a, it's just that how much impact it will have depending on the size of the bird. Uh, heavier broilers will have a, a bigger impact than when they are smaller. But the, the beneficial effects of, of good incubation remain for the rest of their life. It's true that there are other factors that can affect them. For example, transportation, higher temperatures during the first days in brooding, or mm, once in a while there are problems with nutrition that could be affecting these animals. But the great majority of cases happens uh, in all the flocks and the incidence is relatively small. So when it's one percent, half percent, then it is very hard to believe and it's very difficult to prove that you can cause this small incidence with nutrition because a hundred percent of the flock are having the same diet and why only one person have the problem all the time. And that can increase when there is bad incubation from flock to flock, and uh, it can go to three, five, ten percent. But many times it's related with that first influence in the hatchery. As the industry moves toward reducing antibiotics, or in some cases, eliminating them altogether, and I think more than 50 percent of the broiler chickens raised in this country are now raised without a antibiotics. Does that set the stage for any other lameness problems? Yes. 
Definitely because um, all animals, in some way or another, always are exposed to bacteria. And um, when uh, you have these, these problems, the, the lameness is not something related with one specific bone. It's actually the whole structure, the skeletal structure of the animal that is in, unbalanced. So many times the animal has to um, create that balance through modifications of the gait. Those modifications of the gait create friction. And many of those frictions open the door to many bacteria that could be circulating, and could be uh, fighting or uh, getting away from the immunological system. Normally, during a normal uh, flock, a healthy flock, these uh, bacteria that get inside or translocate to the bloodstream or to the tissues, they normally will be eliminated by, by uh, the, any immunological response. But when they have those uh, um, open doors in tissues like the cartilage, those bacteria tend to uh, create their areas of growth where the immunological tissue doesn't go, doesn't infiltrate to those areas. That is the case of, for example, the enterococcus that can happen, uh, uh, or, or E. coli that can uh, infiltrate both in the femoral uh, area, the acetabulum, or it can go to a um, vertebra. And then we have all these other diseases that become uh, also uh, infectious. But originally, they tend to have always a problem that is also developmental, like it happens with humans. In humans, uh, it frequently they could have problems when there is a developmental problem, problems with positioning, problems with balance on the articulations that ended up to be sometimes um, infectious. And I imagine litter has an effect on the amount of lameness that you see as well. Yes, lameness, uh, of course, the, the soil where they have to walk, if it is too hard, if it is too wet, um, will affect how they balance their, their gait. So that, that will create, create an additional stress to the birds. And of course, the whole environment will be more contaminated. And uh, the, the amount of bacteria that they, ha they, they have to deal with in the immunological system is higher. So consequently, they, 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 there are more chances to have bigger incidents of all other problems. Well, it's a complex issue, one that involves disease management, but also animal welfare and uh, the challenges of antibiotic-free. It seems like you've got your work cut out for you. This was uh, uh, always uh, one of the main problems of the industry, even when we were raising smaller birds or with uh, ledgers, they, they also ha used to have problems. Um, Always there are going to be some of these because of the fast growth that we have on the birds, but especially because it's very hard that to manage the uh, flocks that are big. The, to try to keep uniformity on the uh, environmental conditions in bigger flocks is much more difficult. So those birds that cannot receive from the egg until the processing plant uniform conditions, those that are under uh, stress that we are not able to manage to uh, get them uh, the best uh, temperature and, and ventilation, they will be the ones that will be exposed to this stress that cause the developmental problem. So the problem is not to find the solution, the problem is to actually um, find what is the problem that they have to solve in every single uh, hatchery, uh, truck that they transport birds, or in the farms. It's going to take some good old-fashioned detective work to figure out what's causing these problems in the first place. And many times it's, it's art, the art of, of the poultry growers, of watching on the details, the, 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 a lot of observations, a lot of simple uh, common sense, and, and finding those, those uh, spaces where they can have problems. And today with technologies like infrared or uh, with electronic sensors, they could even help better to have a better environment for those birds. Thank you.